There's no denying it. Corn snakes are one of, if not the most popular pet snake that you could possibly own, and for great reason. But how do you take care of one? Today we're going over from beginning to end all you need to know about how to take care of your new corn snake. My name's Adam, this is Corn. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. That's a frog. Stick around. I think one of the most important things to know about any snake is how big they're going to get. Any pet that you get, whether it's a dog, a cat, or a snake, how big does the thing get? Every time. That's a white tree frog, by the way. We'll let him, he's looking for ladies. He's looking for love. Uh, welcome to the ladies, man. So the size of a corn snake is actually perfect by a lot of standards. In my opinion, this is kind of perfect. Maybe a little bit slender for some, but for those that are ball pythons, and there's a guide right here, corn snakes are gonna be four to five feet long and slender. This is a breeding male. This is, a, well, not breeding right now, but a proven breeder male. This male has produced babies with a female corn snake before. He's full grown. We think he's about four years old. This is as big as they're going to get on average. And as you can see, they're very easy to manage in terms of their size. They're not strong enough that they're going to constrict you. Sure, his little tail's around my neck, but I didn't even notice it until I looked next to the, the screen here. So they're of no danger to any human. With that said, don't leave your toddler alone with your corn snake, always supervise children. But if you do have kids, this is kind of a perfect size for kids where they're not too fragile, but they're also impressive enough that they're going to be impressive. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is enclosures because first of all, the size is important. How big does the enclosure need to be? And how are you going to outfit it to be optimized for that species? With corn snakes, really simple. Now, this might be controversial, I don't care. 120 gallons minimum four by two by two. You could get away with maybe a little bit lower in height, maybe, so like a four by two by 18 inches, that could work, but I'm sticking to my guns. You have to have eight square feet of space in my opinion. Some people will say 75 gallons or something like that. I, I disagree. The snake is five feet long. This snake is four and a half feet long, but they can get four to five. So give them enough space to move around. The days of keeping four foot snakes in 20 gallon enclosures are long over. Now in terms of what to put on the floor, let's start there. Let's build from the ground up. In terms of substrate, there's a bunch of different options. You could go plain Jane, go newspaper, paper towel, whatever. I would recommend maybe something a little bit more enriching, something for them to dig through because although they're not burrowing snakes, they will use a little bit of burrowing substrate if available to them. So what I recommend are things like Aspen. This is great because uh, animal it doesn't need high humidity aspen usually works i like it to look a little bit more naturalistic so i like to use something that looks like the earth where they're from which is the eastern part of the u.s so what's easy for me is just coconut core mixed with coconut chip mixed with sand basically a naturalistic type of substrate I wouldn't worry about something that you can plant plants in because I tried that with this specific corn snake and he just trampled all the plants. So if you did it, you need really robust like tree type plants. I don't recommend it. And once you've got that, some important things. Water bowl, obviously, something big enough for your snake to get in. They generally won't soak that much, but sometimes they will before shedding or if it's a little bit too warm, things like that. We'll get to heat in a second. And then just some enrichment, right? The easiest things, of course, that are necessary are things like hides. So I like to use cork rounds. They're kind of expensive in comparison, but you could use something as simple as an overturned bucket or dish or a hide that you buy from the reptile store. It's really up to you. I just think that these cork logs look pretty cool. And because snakes like to feel confined, like they feel very safe when all of their sides are touching the hide, I should say, I feel like the cork logs kind of work best, but that's just my personal opinion. And once you have the basics, I would just recommend some sort of clutter or it depends really, right? Like know the personality of your snake. Normally I'll clutter up an enclosure with fake plants. And this is just so that the snake can get from one side to the other without being seen or feels like it can't be seen. With this snake, it's very bold. It's not very shy. So I just kind of left it uncluttered because I want to see the snake and the snake doesn't mind being out all the time. I have something underneath the halogen, which is protected with a type of halogen protector, by the way. And uh, because of this, uh, it holds the heat and it gets belly heat and it gets radiant heat right from the actual hotspot, right from the bulb. And it also has UVB. But we'll get into that in, in a second. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. Actually, no, this is a perfect time to talk about lighting, humidity, and heat. Heat, humidity, and light, however I say it. Great news, corn snakes are really easy in terms of 
heat, humidity, and lighting. <laughs> now keep in mind, this is a care guide. So I'm gonna give you some parameters, but if I say 75 and yours is 73, you're okay. We're talking Fahrenheit here. That's less than one degree Celsius. This is a guide, these animals live in the wild. We all know, especially say South Carolina, North Carolina, for example, where their native range is, it's not perfectly 75 every day. Some days in May, it's gonna be 80, and some days it's gonna be 60. So keep that in mind, this is a guide. So you want a gradient as always. So I'm using this PVC enclosure here. It's four feet long, two feet deep, two feet tall. You want your low end, your cool end, to be mid 70s-ish. Mine is 76 degrees, so that works. You could go low 70s, you could go high 70s, as long as they have a gradient and they can pick what temperature they wanna be at. The warm end is gonna be mid 80s, so mine is at 84 degrees, so this is kind of perfect. If yours is at 86, don't worry about it, you're still a-okay. In the basking spot or the hot spot, it's up to you. You can use a halogen or you can use something like a belly heat from a heat mat or whatever heat tape, is gonna be around 90. Mine is between 89 and 92, depending. Uh, during the course of the day, it heats up and things like that, right? And I always turn my hotspot off at night. I allow a night drop, because these animals are from a similar climate to where I am in the summer months anyway. It's actually warmer here than North Carolina, even though I'm a thousand miles north. But regardless, that's neither here nor there. So I do offer a night drop. You don't need to offer a night drop, but if you do, just make sure that it doesn't get lower than 65-ish. But again, if you're offering night drops to your animals, they're probably in a room like this, where at night this room gets between 69 and 75, depending on the point in the year. Humidity is really easy too, because your average house is going to be around 40 to 60, something like that, depending on where you live in the world. Some places as low as 30. 40 to 60% is perfect for a corn snake. Again, if it gets a little bit low and then it has a spike at night, don't worry about it, it's fine. Just don't let the animal be in a prolonged state of 20% or 80%. They're not a desert animal and they're not a tropical animal. So as long as you don't do that, you'll be fine. If it's 80% for a full day because you had just sprayed it down and you had a rainstorm outside and it's humid, you're fine. If you leave it at 80% humidity for three weeks, then you might get a respiratory infection. Again, these are parameters. Nothing has to be exact. Don't overthink things. This is supposed to be fun. And in terms of lighting, as long as you have a natural light cycle, so what I'm talking about is 12 hours of darkness, 12 hours of light. Or if you live in this hemisphere, what I do with all my animals is I have my lights automatically go on when the sun rises and automatically go off when the sun sets. So on a day like today, where the summer solstice was literally earlier, or it was, I guess, a week ago, it's gonna be like 16 or 17 hours of light. But in the winter, it's only gonna be eight hours of light. So I naturally cycle it like that. This helps with breeding, but I just do it because it's easy. It makes sense. There's a big window at the back here. So the animals are gonna see light anyway. And for me, I just prefer it that way. If you wanna offer additional light, like a UVB, you can do that. I use a halogen to heat this animal. I just think it looks better in this enclosure and I wanna test it out. And he has a 6.0 UVB from Arcadia. So you can use whatever. You can use Reptisun, whatever. It doesn't matter. The brand doesn't matter. You could use a 2.0, but I wouldn't recommend going higher than a six. And although I recommend UVB, they can live perfectly healthy lives without it. I'm just experimenting more with UVB because there's more research being done and I'm trying to offer it to as many as my animals as possible, observing them and seeing if it makes a difference in their behavior. Next, we've got diet because like I always say, if you feed your animals, they are way more fun and less smelly after a while. Although corn snakes can go a while without eating. I recommend for adults to feed them once a week or once every 10 days. I always recommend using common sense. Don't listen to a video like this and be like, oh, well, the bald Mr. Clean looking guy said it has to be every nine and a half days, so therefore, like, no. If I say seven days, but your animal is gaining too much weight, either lessen the load of the food, like make the food lesser, what am I trying to say here? Give smaller prey items or feed less frequently. I always feed an animal that is slightly bigger or about the same size as the width of the snake. The biggest point in the snake is how wide that mouse or rat is going to be. You wanna see a little bit of a bulge, but not a huge bulge when you're done feeding. So this snake gets fed every 10 days or so. And corn snakes eat really, really well. So you're gonna feed things like rats and mice. I feed frozen thawed. I always recommend this. I don't like the idea of feeding a live animal to a snake. Putting a live animal in with a snake is just guaranteed death, the animal knows it, it just undue stress for the feeder. So instead they go into a chamber with CO2, they go to sleep forever and they don't even know what happened. That's it, 
Diet is easy. There's nothing easier than the diet for something like a corn snake. Oh, did you know that corn snakes are rat snakes? Now you know, fun fact. Okay, let's move on. Two more categories, let's go with behavior first. Now, every animal, it matters. The reason that I got a golden retriever as my third dog is because I've always wanted a big dog or medium-sized dog that likes to play, is smart, is trainable, is always happy, don't have to worry about it biting my friends. I got a corn snake because I want something that is trainable, fun, don't have to worry about it biting my friends, knock on wood. I'll always knock on wood if you say snakes don't bite while you're holding a snake. Now, of course, anything with teeth can bite you, but as long as you handle corn snakes from a very early age, they're well socialized, you're generally okay. This snake has been perfect for me so far, and it's slow moving. They're not fast, they're not darty. I mean, they strike fast at food, but most snakes do. This snake is generally predictable. This species of snake is generally predictable. It just overall, even temperament, they don't move that fast. They don't move erratically. They're pretty predictable in their movements. Overall, there's a reason that corn snakes are one of the best pet snakes, not only for adults, but for kids, because they're not that difficult and they're great to handle. And they're diurnal, by the way, and generally terrestrial, but you will find them sometimes climbing stuff. Last category, price, availability, and morphs. Price first, you can get a corn snake for free all the time. If someone breeds normals, they're hard to get rid of, they're gonna be cheap. You can buy a normal corn snake for, I don't know, five, 10, 15, 20, don't go to PetSmart, you'll pay a hundred bucks for nothing. Go to a reptile expo or a reptile shop or a breeder and they'll be basically giving them away. There's also morphs, things like palmettos, which are gonna be hundreds of dollars. So it just depends. And there's everything in between. There's even scaleless corn snakes, which will go for a couple hundred bucks. Availability, well, they're one of the most available snakes in the world. Every pet store, every reptile shop, every expo, is going to have them. You will have no issues finding one at all, ever. And in terms of morphs, we kind of discussed it. There's tons. I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not the genal genealogy guy. See, I'm not even smart enough to say it. This one here is a Tessera Okiti or Okiti, depending on where you're from, if you wanna say it right. And uh, I think that it's a beautiful snake. I mean, white belly, stripe, red, burgundy, like, I like the way the snake looks, but I also like the fully white ones. I like the normal ones. There's a bunch of different ones. And that's it. I feel like we rushed the end of it, but uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Would you ever own a corn snake? Do you own a corn snake? How many? If you don't mind, hit the like and subscribe. It really helps this channel. I really appreciate it. And as always, a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys knew about corn way before I actually got this animal. You know about extra animals in my collection. You know about a whole bunch of stuff. The new project that I'm just doing, I cannot wait for this thing to be done. And I won't be talking about it anywhere except for Patreon until the fall. For as little as a dollar a month, you get all of that and more. And that's it. Because I do videos Mondays and Thursdays, that means I'll see you in the next one.